Alrighty, in the last video we completed the Oceanside Spider House and got the Giant's Wallet which allows us to hold up to 500 rupees. At this point we can use it to buy the All Night Mask and get two more pieces of heart. However, that's a little out of our way at this point and I assume most of you who are following along with me are a little burned out on item collection, so I'm going to actually save that for after the Great Bay Temple. At long last, we're officially moving on to Zora Cape for the main quest. Now, out in the middle of the water, there's a giant stone fin sticking out of the water, and this is Zora Hall. I'm going to swim out to it, avoiding the skullfish and light likes along the way, and enter the catfish's mouth. This place is very interesting. It's the Zora Music Hall! Yay! Right now, they're doing sound tests and the like, which you can help with if you want, but it doesn't actually accomplish anything, sadly. There's also a lot of very interesting character interaction here, such as taking a picture of Lulu and giving it to her crazed fan upstairs for a few rupees, and even you can scold a peeping Tom who is trying to look through the keyhole into Lulu's room. Yikes! All these things don't really matter to our main quest, but it's still fun to check out. There is, however, a piece of heart we can get here, so just follow along with me and I'll show you how to get that. So there is a Zora that is guarding each door who, I assume, work here or something, but you can enter each room by speaking with this Zora while wearing the Zora mask and they'll let you in. The first room here belongs to Macau, the now-dead guitarist whom you are wearing his spirit, I guess, <laughs> and Tijo, the drummer. If you speak with the plump Zora, he expresses concern about Lulu, who hasn't spoken in days. Tijo is a clever guy, and he's puzzled out what's going on. And he, by the way, is playing the cave theme from the um, A Link to the Past for the Super Nintendo. Now I seem to remember him saying something about him breaking the ladder, which is the fish ribs that are on the ground here, but he doesn't actually mention anything about it here in your conversation, but anyway, you can hookshot onto the tree branch above to get up to Macau's part of the room, and on the table here you can read Macau's diary while wearing the Zora mask. The second room belongs to Japis, the basis for the Indiegogos. The song that he's playing is the dungeon theme from the original Legend of Zelda for the Famicom and Nintendo Entertainment System. Once you're done interrogating him, you can whip out your ocarina to jam with him, and he wants to play the same song that he and Macau played the other day, the same one that we read in the diary a moment ago.
After you're done jamming, then Jappas will explain that you two can't bring this song to Evan, the band leader, because it would make him jealous, and he doesn't like you creating songs behind his back. This seriously bugs me, like, what kind of band is this? Isn't that their job, to make songs and play them? I don't know. Wouldn't you think he'd be grateful for them coming up with ideas and bringing them to him? I don't know. The third room belongs to Evan, the band leader. The song that he's playing on his piano is the death and credits song from the original Legend of Zelda for the Famicom and Nintendo Entertainment System. At this point, if you speak with Evan as Mikau, he will harass you about finding the missing Zora eggs. If you do bring him any, he just tells you to bring them to the Marine Research Lab. If you've been following along with me, you should have already collected all of the eggs and learned the song for this area, the New Wave Bossa Nova. So everything he's saying here doesn't really matter, but it is kind of backstory for what's happening with Lulu and all. Now, as Jappa said earlier, you couldn't show the song to Evan because it would make him jealous, and he wouldn't accept it. Because of this, you need to take off the Zora mask and play the full 16-note song in any form other than Macau. In case you didn't write it down or remember it, I have it shown here on the left. Now, I also uh, looked at a gossip stone here in Zora Cape that is along the shore, and it also gives you the exact same advice. It says that in order for you to correctly do this song and get this piece of heart, you need to play this song in any other form other than Macau. Once he's done tinkering, Evren will then steal the song and expand upon it, which comes into play later in this game, as you'll see, but he'll be pretty proud of himself and bribe you with a piece of heart to keep it quiet that he stole your tune. Great way to get sued, by the way. At this point, you can continue on to the last room, which belongs to Lulu, but there's nothing we can do there at this time, really. Instead, you want to follow the left wall until you emerge behind the Zora Hall itself. Out here, you can slash the owl statue to create this warp point, and then speak with Lulu, if you wish, who is sulking in the corner. Unlike the last game, these Zora females apparently have clothes now. When will the men learn that trick anyway? She still doesn't have her voice, so she can't speak with you, and if you wear the Zora mask and try to talk to her, you'll get more reaction out of her, and Tata will mention that it looks like she's trying to tell you something. She's not trying very hard, though. Grumble, grumble. <laughs> Anyway, now that we have the transformation mask and the song for this area, as well as the warp point just before the temple, we now have everything we need in order to enter the Great Bay Temple. So now would be an excellent time to soar back to Clock Town, put your remaining rupees in the bank, and play the Song of Time. For this next temple, we're going to be using a lot of magic, so I recommend you snag at least one battle of green potion, or even Chitei Romani. And now, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, though. I'm actually not going to be using it, but if this is your first stab at the temple, you'll probably use a lot of magic exploring. Another thing that would be good to have is, surprisingly, Deku Nuts, which you can also purchase here at the trading post in West Clocktown. It's a very nice item to have for one of the mini-bosses in the temple, but it's not required. 
Put a sword back to Zora Cape once you're ready and slash the jars to stock up on arrows and bombs as well as find a fairy that you can put in a bottle. Lastly, you should play the inverted Song of Time, if you haven't already, to slow down time to one-third that of normal. This gives us the most amount of time possible to complete this temple. At long last, you want to stand next to Lulu while wearing the Sora Mask and play the New Wave Bossa Nova to open the way to the temple. At this point, you have actually just restored Lulu's voice, uh, so she'll go back inside and the band will begin rehearsing for the Carnival of Time and twiddle their thumb and wait for you to meet up with them for three days, I suppose. <laughs> so I'll be showing that after the temple, though. If you're still unsure of what to do, you want to simply target the head of the turtle and speak with him for him to explain that you can use your hookshot to latch onto the tree on his back. For those of you who have played the Smash Bros. franchise, you probably recognize this area since it's one of the melee stages along with Tingle and the Marine Research Lab. So that concludes everything we had to do here. Just sit back and enjoy this humorous scene of the Gerudo pirates getting caught in the dragon storm that surrounds the temple. And then join me for the next chapter where I will take you through the Great Bay Temple. <laughs>